Yes, we are back with the FYC dance, which means we are doing a live episode of FYC with the amazing Perry Nemiroff, with the mighty Jeff Snyder. And on this very, very special edition of FYC, hello, TV fans. We are doing our final predictions for the Emmy Awards, which air on January 15th. 2024, which is this year. Yes, remember the Emmys? Remember that? Remember we were doing that? Well, we have to do our due diligence, finish this baby off. Perry and Jeff, are you ready to dive into our final predictions for the friggin' 75th Emmys? I've been ready for this since end of August. <laughs> <laughs> really? No kidding. Jeff, what about you? <laughs> I don't even, we might as well be predicting the Emmy winners for 1997. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> oh my God. You know, it's so funny because like these votes were already submitted back like in, uh, in, in August and, and we've been waiting and sitting on these and now finally we're going to find out who the winners are, but let's get right to, to it. As they say with the nominees for best drama series, they are Andor, better call Saul, the crown house of the dragon, the last of us with 24 Emmy nominations succession with 27 nominations, the white Lotus with 23 nominations total and Yellow Jackets. Perry, what TV show is winning Best Drama Series? I will take a moment to say Travis Earl is very excited about live FYC. Yes, yes Travis. All right, buddy. <laughs> We're taking your Super Chat questions today, too. So if you want to submit something, whether it's about TV shows or Oscars, we're here for it to drop them in. So this one's easy. This one's easy. This one is probably one of the predictions that was freshest on my brain because yep. I think it's going to dominate because it's an excellent show and because the show is over. It is succession. Without a doubt, nothing is touching it. It is over. All right, Jeff, what do you think? Do you agree with the amazing Perry Nemiroff? I sure do. It's going to be a succession procession, Scott. <laughs> Careful with that mic getting really close to your face. Yes, a real the, that microphone, Jeff, we've established that that microphone is really, really, really great. Uh, <laughs> I agree with both of you. This was an easy one. Succession leading the way with 27 nominations. It already won twice in 2020 and 2022. Uh, no question about it. Succession is the show to beat. All right, moving on to lead actor in a drama series. The nominees are Jeff Bridges for The Old Man, Brian Cox for Succession, Kieran Culkin for Succession, Bob Odenkirk for Better Call Saul, Pedro Pascal for The Last of Us, Jeremy Strong for Succession. Jeremy Strong won already in 2020. Jeff Snyder, who is winning lead actor drama series? Uh, I still think Jeremy Strong is, but I acknowledge that Kieran Culkin could pull off an upset. Uh, I don't think it's going to be an upset. Perry, what do you think? So, yeah, I'm still sticking with where I was back in the summer. And I'm going with Kieran Culkin. I will say that I do see a possible outcome where maybe Jeremy Strong and Kieran Culkin eat votes from each other. And then Bob Odenkirk winds up taking the win. But I'm still sticking with my gut in this category. I feel like this year is Kieran Culkin's year. Harry, you know what? That could happen. And if Bob Odenkirk wins after being snubbed for a win after like all these years that he's been nominated, which is every year uh, almost, uh, that would be a great thing. That would be a great thing. I, you know, I think what's interesting is I was thinking about this during my, my, my predictions for the winners here. Like, like if, if this was September, it, but it's it's January, you know, so we have to put ourselves in the mindset that the votes were already closed at the end of August or beginning of September or whatever it was. You know, we can't be think like, oh, well, maybe it's it's going to be this or that because we have to we have to pretend like it's the fall, not not the winter, not January of 2024. Uh, I went with Kieran Culkin as well. Uh, I think we should we should, you know, sort of majority rule on this and go with Kieran. Jeff, are you OK with that? Yeah, that's fine. I don't watch the show, so I don't know who actually is better. I just think that Jeremy oh. Strong has a very different reputation than Kieran Culkin, and that that's why I lean towards Strong. But I, I'm going with Kieran because I think of any if there was any character 
that went through a more dramatic arc and changed over the course of this final season, it was Kieran Culkin. Perry? I, I, I don't think... I think Jeremy Strong uh, went through a pretty significant arc as well. I, I feel like maybe the change isn't as apparent in that character, but perhaps that is the point. But I think they both deliver really, really big. I just think maybe, uh, I don't know, Kieran Culkin might have a couple of like flashier uh, scenes, so to speak, more emotional, yeah. more, more uh, heavy emotional beats in this last season that really stuck with me. And I think that could wind up giving him the edge just can I make one broader point about yeah. the, the timeline here? Because another thing that I think we're going to see happen is basically any nominee that isn't from like a juggernaut of a show, I think isn't going to have the chance they might have had they been able to campaign. Excellent point. That's another thing that's been like completely taken out of this scenario. So I feel like the more likely winners are the more likely shows to have been watched. And in, you know, in the case of drama, for instance, it's going to be, you know, Succession, White Lotus, the 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 shows that have been getting all the viewers since the beginning. That's a really good point. Uh, you know, the the Emmys were torpedoed by the actor strike because a lot of these actors couldn't uh, campaign. Uh, so those uh, wins were really kind of based on like the quality of the show, not on the quality of the campaigning. Jeff, I'm curious. Uh, I, I feel like you would have a lot to say about that. With with regards to Succession, with regards to camp not being able to campaign. For the actors oh i just i just don't care i don't I, i'm just not invested in the emmys i'm not invested in this crop of contenders because i watch so few of them um so yeah i just honestly have not been paying attention our right, cuts perry and i'll just take it from here jeff <laughs> uh but i will say for everyone watching if you have a question for the super chat uh now's your chance we're live we are here to take your questions and if you want to talk about oscar stuff Throw it our way. Please do. That is what we are here for. But we are going to move on anyway to lead actress in a drama series where the nominees are uh, Sharon Horgan, Bad Sisters, Melanie Linsky Perry for Yellow Jackets, Elizabeth Moss for The Handmaid's Tale, Bella Ramsey, The Last of Us, Kerry Russell, The Diplomat, Sarah Snook for Succession. And FYI, last year's winner in this category was Zendaya for Euphoria. Perry, who's winning Best Actress in a drama I series? I probably made the Melanie, Melanie Linsky joke back in August, so I'm not going to do that again. I do think she has the second best chance of winning this category, but I am going succession in this category as well. I think Sarah Snook is like above and beyond. Uh, she's well ahead of the pack. I would be yep. shocked if she didn't win this award, even though looking at this list, I mean of the shows I have seen, and I've seen a good deal in this category. There's a significant amount of exceptional performances that I'd be happy to see win. I just don't think they have a chance. And Sarah Snook went from supporting actress to lead actress in this final year for succession and deservedly. So uh, I have her as well. Her. Jeff, yeah. Jeff, are you, are I, you shaking your head in agreement? Yeah. I have Sarah Snook in, in pretty much a, a walk, but if there is a surprise, I don't think it'll be Melanie Linsky. I think it'll actually be Carrie Russell. Oh, that would be a hell of a surprise. Uh, I don't, such a surprise that I don't think it's happening. But yeah. well, I mean, her nomination wasn't happening either to you guys. And surprise, surprise. Well, that is why we're going to remember this conversation if Kerry Russell actually wins. And I can say, Jeff, he's not going to win. Not Sarah, Sarah's no fear, but. All right, moving on to comedy series where the nominees are Abbott Elementary with eight nominations, Barry the Bear with 13 nominations, Jury Duty, love that show. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, love that show too. 14 nominations, Only Murders in the Building, Ted Lasso, leading the way in comedy series with 21 nominations. And Wednesday, Jeff, what is winning comedy series? Can't wait to hear what you say on this one. Comedy series? Well, isn't it like The Bear? Well, no. I uh, like early. <laughs> this, this one is this one's like a little bit of a toss-up to me. Like I'm okay. I'm looking at all of the comedy <laughs> categories and pretty much, you know, for the most part at least, I'm narrowing it down to either the bear or Abbott Elementary. And I'm trying to like, you know, almost do the math in my brain. Like if Abbott Elementary wins this, then the bear will win that. And I'm I'm kind of not sure how they're gonna break down. At this point in time, I'm giving the bear the edge in this particular category, but 
I'll, I'll fully admit that it's the tightest race between the two, and it could be either of them. I agree with you. Uh, Jeff, what do you think uh, uh, between, well, any one of these nominations, which is winning Best Comedy Series? I mean, I, th I still have my money on the bear. I know Abbott Elementary is very popular. It's, it's obviously going to have a, a ton of love behind it, um, and it could very well win, but I, 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 I can't shake season two of the bear, yeah. All right. Well, well, let's not forget that Ted Lasso won in this category the last two years. Ted Lasso in its third and final season. Does Ted Lasso have a chance to pull off a hat trick? I, th I think Ted Lasso would probably be number three in my rankings, but similar to what we were just saying in those other categories, I think the, the Bear and Abbott are on a different tier and it's untouchable for Ted Lasso ultimately. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeff, would, would Ted Lasso, I mean, do you think it, it can pull no, off absolutely. a third win? No, no. no. Well, I, listen, Perry, going back to what you said, I, actually what both of you said, I think that this, this category is really down to – the Bear or Abbott Elementary, and also going back to what you said, Perry, about thinking like, well, what if what if this category honors this and this category honors that? So in my head, I'm thinking, you know, lead actor in a comedy will go to you know the Bear. We'll get to that, uh, but comedy series will go. I have Abbott Elementary mm -hmm. as as the show to beat here. You could, I mean, you could be right. I still, <laughs> I still lean the bear because I'm doing, I'm doing like a, a little bit of a switch of what you're doing because comedy actress, I think, not to spoil the next category, but Quinta's going to run away with it. So I think she's got that, and maybe the show has this. But you're not wrong about best actor in a comedy series either. Right, right, right. Jeff, what do you think uh, if you had to choose between the bear or Abbott Elementary for comedy series? What do you think? The bear. You're going with the bear, Perry. Going with the bear. I can't remember when the last season of of Abbott wrapped up, but but remember remember how hot of a topic again, and, and a reminder to everybody out there. Right now, all the bear nominations we're talking about they are for season one, not That's season right. two. That's but correct. Season two was so incredibly well received and hit at such a perfect time for voting for Emmys that I think, especially when you remove the campaigning, that could have made it fresher or like a higher priority maybe on people's minds. And it could give it the edge where, you know, Abbott might have taken it otherwise. Well, uh, great point. Um, geez. This is this is tough. Uh, I, I'm really leaning towards Abbott Elementary. Um, I just think it's more of an ensemble. It's 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 whereas the Bear is about as I mean that's an ensemble too, but it's like really about Jeremy Allen White. Um, I'm going with Abbott here. I I think Abbott has the edge a little. What do you I th think? I think um, not just Jeremy Allen White. I think I think it's going to wind up winning another uh, acting Emmy or yeah, two. You're right. Probably, yeah. Okay, Jeff. Sticking with the what? bear. Yeah, dude, the bear, the bear. Like I don't know how many times I got to say it. The yeah, bear. It. We're we're two of three. It's the bear. It's the bear. All right. Well, there you go. It is the bear. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> no, not damn it. I love the bear. Uh, <laughs> all right. Moving on to uh, lead actor in a comedy series. Uh, last year, uh, last year's uh, winner. Who was last year's winner? Um, oh, last year's winner was Jason Sudeikis. He won the last two years. Uh, he's nominated again, Bill Hader for Barry, who won in 2018 and 2019, Jason Siegel for Shrinking, Martin Short, Only Murders in the Building, and Jeremy Allen White the Bear. Speaking of which, who's winning in this one, Jeff? Duh. Jeremy Allen White the Bear. Come on down. Yeah. Bring Come on all down. your All right, Perry, what do you think? Jeremy Allen White. It's yep. a done deal. It's a done deal. Agreed. 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 Okay. Let's move on to lead actress in a comedy series. Last year's winner was Gene Smart for Hacks. The nominees this year are Christina Applegate for Dead to Me, Rachel Brosnahan for Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I'm really going to miss that show. Quinta Brunson for Abbott Elementary, Natasha Leone for Poker Face, Janet Ortega for Wednesday. Perry, who's winning lead actress in the comedy series? Quinta Brunson. Quinta Brunson. I have her as well. Jeff, what about you? Yeah, I have Quinta Brunson as well. I, I think Jenna had a chance at this, but kind of shot herself in the foot. Jenna Ortega? Why? 
with, with her comments about what the, comments? the right. You guys are like living in. in oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, the, the, those comments. The, 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 the comments about the, the writers on, on Wednesday. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah. Right. I, okay. I, I think people that, that turned off a lot of people. And she just basically took credit for the success of the show. Uh, and I don't think, I think it cost her a potential chance at an Emmy. I mean, Quinta was always going to be the front runner, but that's such a popular show Wednesday. She could have pulled it off, but not anymore. Well, I, I mean, Christina Applegate was excellent in all three seasons of Dead to Me. Rachel Brosnahan, uh, I mean, you know, Marvel's Mrs. Maisel is just one of my all-time favorite shows. I, I adore it. But uh, no, Quinta Brunson is the one to beat here. Moving on to limited or anthology series where the nominees are Beef with 13 nominations, Dahmer uh, uh, with 13 nominations, Daisy Jones and the Six, Fleischman is in trouble, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Perry, who's winning limited or anthology series? I think it's ultimately between Beef and Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. I think uh, Monster received a more divisive response. I think Beef is going to take it. And if I were a voter, I'd be voting for Beef because I think that is such a brilliant show on every single level. I can't wait to see it win an Emmy. I agree with you. Jeff, what about you? Limited anthology series, who's winning? I hate to agree with you on this one, but I think you're right, Perry. I mean, I, I thought Monster was so good. Uh, it was terrific. But I just don't see them rewarding that kind of programming. Um, I, I think that in the, at the end of the day, it is going to be Beef, which just did something new and, and fresh and exciting. We've seen serial killer yeah. stories before. As good as that one was, I, I think it is going to end up being Beef. Well, moving on, uh, I agree about Beef. We're, we're in agreement on that. Moving on to lead actor in a limited series or TV movie, Taron Edgerton for Blackbird, Kumail Nanjiani for Welcome to Chippendales, Evan Peters for Monster, Jeffrey Dahmer, Daniel Radcliffe for Weird, The Al Yankovic Story, Michael Shannon for George and Tammy, and Stephen Yoon for Beef. Jeff, what do you think? Is it going to be uh, Evan Peters or Stephen Yoon? I, I think it's going to be Evan Peters. I mean, I thought that was just a terrific, terrific performance. Um, it just lingers in the, in the subconscious longer than Steven Yens did. He, he's great. Um, but I think that's where like the split will come in. It'll win series, but, but uh, Evan will get actor. All right, Perry. I actually, I went back and forth between Evan Peters and Steven Yen. What did you, what do you, what about you? I'm going to blow your minds in a second. But first, I can't remember if I had watched this bef like before our last Emmys episode, but I will say Kumail Nanjiani is real damn good in Welcome to Chippendales. <laughs> the field was different. I would like to be able to say he has a better shot of winning, but I was like one of my favorite performances ever from him. I thought I thought he really oh. just, you know, like ate that role up, knew exactly what to do with it. And it's not, not an easy role to play. Um, here is my, I'm going to be stubborn in this category. Daniel Jeff, Radcliffe. Here's what I'm about to do. I think Evan Peters and Stephen Young are going to split the vote. And then Daniel Radcliffe is going to sneak in there and he's going to take it for weird, especially because weird, I think, is probably one of the more widely beloved entries in the group. Perry, this is how <laughs> awesome you are. You've changed my mind. You've changed my vote. Uh, and that it wasn't even something you had to twist my arm to do. I think you're right. And also, you know what? I think that that movie uh, that that Daniel Radcliffe is beloved. He survived eight Harry Potter movies without having to to go at, end up in rehab from being too famous. And he's a you know got a great head on his shoulders. He's a he's a good guy. And I think he's beloved. I'm changing my vote here. I'm going with Daniel Radcliffe for Weird, the Al Yankovic story for lead actor in a limited series or a movie. What do you think of that there, Mr. E, the insnider.com? I, I think you're insane. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, majority rules here. So Daniel Radcliffe. Perry, <laughs> so you're got some real bit of revenge on me. The majority <laughs> rules. <laughs> Wait, Perry, you just want to make sure you're, you're not going to cave on this 
No, I'm not. I mean, you could look at, you could double check my gold derby if you want. I still have it ranked that right. way. And I'm not changing it. That's, that's where, then that, then that's what it is. All right. Moving on to lead actress in the limited series or movie. Uh, the nominees are Lizzie Kaplan for Fleischman is in trouble. Jessica Chastain for George and Tammy. Dominique Fishback for Swarm. Catherine Hahn for Tiny Beautiful Things. Riley Keough for Daisy Jones in the Six. And Ali Wong for Beef. Jeff. Lead actress, limited series or movie. Who takes it? I think it's going to be Ali Wong for Beef. I think that's just something totally different than, you know, people expected from her. It's outside of, you know, her her lane. Um, and she impressed a lot of people. She was really good. So She's Excellent. And, yes, she was definitely a revelation on that show. Uh, Perry, what do you think? I would be voting for Dominique Fishback for Swarm. I would be really happy to see her win this award. But if I was given two votes, my next vote would be for Ali Wong. I think I think she is going to win this category, and I will be very happy for her as well. Yep, agreed. Ali Wong takes it. Uh, and the final category that we're covering here on FYC, before we get to the Super Chats, so, so send them our way if you got Super Chats, whether it's Emmys or Oscars, uh, Outstanding Television Movie. I'm actually really looking forward to hearing Perry talk about this one. Dolly Parton's Magic Mountain Christmas, Fire Island, Hocus Pocus 2, Prey, and We're the Al Yankovic Story. Perry, what is winning? Not what do you want to win, what is winning? No, but I can't help myself. So in my dream world, Daniel Radcliffe wins for his performance, and then people are like, let's not give this to Weird, but let's give it to... Okay, listen, I like Weird a lot, clearly. I, I liked it. I thought it was great. Prey was one of my top 10 movies of last year. I think that film is exceptionally well done. It is one of the like franchise continuers that we've received in recent years that I think absolutely nails expanding a popular franchise. I think it should be rewarded. I think this award should go to Prey. I think it is going to go to Weird. Jeff, what's winning here? TV movie. Oh, God. This is a showdown. This is a tricky one. I, I'm i going to go with Weird as well. Yeah. Um, even though I, I do think Prey was the better film, there's just... I don't know. I, I think that... Yeah. Fuck. I don't, I, don't, I don't have a fucking reason. Fucking Al, Al Yankovic. That's why. I, I feel like like I, of these five movies, Prey is the best of the bunch by far. I mean, it's amazing, but I just don't know are the are the Emmys going to give uh, uh, an Emmy to a Predator movie? I mean, but but it's again Al Yankovic weird. It's a it's a, it's a you know charming, funny, and clever, and and uh, Daniel Radcliffe is great. Yeah, I uh, back and weird forth between is... weird and Prey. I think I'm I think it's going to be weird. Weird's better than it has any right to be. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. That's a great way to put it, Jeff. I agree with that uh, assessment on, on Weird. It's better than it has any right to be. And it's on the Roku channel. For anyone who has that, it is worth watching. I think it's really, really good. So those are, are our picks for the Emmys. Once again, uh, for drama series, Succession, lead actor in a drama series, Kieran Culkin for Succession, Lead actress in a drama series, Sarah Snook for Succession. Comedy series, The Bear. Lead actor in a comedy series, Jeremy Allen White for The Bear. Uh, lead actress in a comedy series, Quinta Brunson for Abbott Elementary. Limited or anthology series, Beef. Lead actor in a limited series or movie, Daniel Radcliffe. Lead actress in a limited series or movie, Ali Wong for Beef. And finally, outstanding television movie, which goes to Weird, the Al Yankovic story. So there you go. Those are our picks. Let us know what you think. Comment below. Comment right now. Send us a super chat. Jeff, you got I mean, something I, to say? If, no, if, if you guys want to hear us talk about Golden Globes, like that obviously was not on the agenda today. But if, if you want it, then pay up with the Streamlabs, and, and we'll talk about it for money. Yes, that's how it works. <laughs> we'll talk about the Golden Globes. <laughs> really? <laughs> the Golden Globes doing something for the Golden Globes for money. Imagine that. Exactly. Uh, I was about to just like like spill out my opinion on the Golden Globes and how they factor in, but I won't. I'll wait for the Super Chat, and I will go to this Super Chat right here. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you so much. Love reading all three of your work and can't wait for what 2024 is going to bring us. Cheers. 
Thank Cheers you so you much. Too, Thank you so much. Now we've got another one. Will either Cole Hugo or Sandra Huller get a double acting nomination in lead and supporting this year or neither? Uh, I'll take right, this one right, first. Jeff. Go ahead. You go, Jeff. I think that they'd both be lucky to get a single nomination. Oh, wow. I think Sandra Huller will be luckier than Coleman Domingo. Uh, but by the way, we're back to the Oscars now, folks. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you know. you, wait, wait, wait. So you think Coleman Domingo stands a better chance of being nominated than Sandra Huller? I think yes. Coleman Domingo has a better chance of being nominated than Sandra Huller, but I don't think that Coleman Domingo is a lock for a nomination. Because it all depends. All that depends, Perry and Jeff, in on whether or not the Academy will nominate Leonardo DiCaprio. If Leo doesn't make it in, Coleman Domingo will. That's my thought. I think he's the one who's, you know, probably has the 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 biggest chance to not get nominated out of the nominees that we've talked about before. I think that movie is just D DOA, Rustin. No, well, I, no. I think the movie in in every other category, except for best original song, it definitely could get nominated there for Lenny Kravitz, but. I, I think it's going to be a situation where because it's not going to get nominated in most other categories, all the support is going to go his way. I think yeah. he gets the added boost from the color purple. And on top of that, like dude is working the circuit exactly like he should be right now. He's getting out there. He's promoting his, his he's movie. Everywhere. He's a lovely human being. I feel yeah. like those, those types of things are what are going to push him into that category. So I do think of the two, getting a single nomination, he has the better chance. But that's not to say she's that far behind him. She could easily get into Best Actress as well. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Great question, Skip. Great to see you, buddy. That was a good you one. Ready? You ready for this one, Jeff? David's back. Hey, Jeff. How are you feeling about that bet of our... I don't even remember what the bet was. Um, uh, there's one of interest I'm feeling it. great. The, the Zone of Interest made four Oscar shortlists and just made 10 BAFTA long lists. I'm feeling pretty good about my instincts that Zone of Interest is strong like any other like any other great Holocaust movie. All right, Jeff. That's for you, uh, bud. What was the bet? Can you recap the bet? I think I, I think David said seven Oscar nominations oh, no. for the Zone of Interest. So I am feeling very good, David. I don't care if it makes a million BAFTA long lists. There's a reason that the word long is in there okay mm -hmm. um i think that yes it's, this movie is going to have baptist support so is all, uh, all of us strangers by the way yep. which was also First. on 10 bath along let's i believe um <laughs> and uh but yeah i i've i'm telling you i've heard so many people walking out of like and these are smart people i respect walking out of zone of interest or just being like i'll never watch that again wow well, great question, David. Thanks for the support. All Harry, right. What else we got? That is it. Those that are our it. That is it. for the day. Where's the Golden Globes stuff? I thought everybody wanted to talk about the Golden Globes, people. Everyone was so spicy about that at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I I'm looking forward to the next episode of FYC because I think we're going to do live reactions. I just like for... this. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Paris. I, I just like this. I agree. <laughs> I like Lina oh, Sandgren, right? Travis, Lena yeah, Sandgren, Linus. absolutely. He did, he did. Uh, and look, I I hope that 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 Saltburn gets a lot of love. I know it's I know it's very competitive. There are a lot I of great movies. Yes, I think it's gonna. I think Saltburn. Jeff's not gonna like this either. I think Saltburn is going up. I th I think I the popularity it of it after like I, I Jeff I know people watching in on Prime Video don't equal Academy voters. I think everyone is so incredibly aware of that movie and it's in everyone's faces and people are enjoying it. I think I that's so. going to give it I a better God, chance Perry. than you might have predicted a couple weeks ago. Perry, I swear to God, I hope you are right. Nothing would make me happier than to see Saltburn, you know, come in, you know, come in swinging during the nominations when they're announced on January 23rd. Uh, I, that movie is, I loved it from the beginning and it just keeps going up in my assessment. Um, anyway. What else we got, Perry? Um, we've got this one here. If there's one upset Emmy win you could see happening, which one would it be? Oh, like could see happening. Oh, Pedro oh, okay. Pascal comes out Great. of nowhere to, to knock one. off both the succession guys and wins for and Last of Us just because it's his year. 
What about uh, on that note? Uh, what about Bella Ramsey? That would be uh, a nice uh, 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 upset there. Cramdian, uh, uh, is that uh, uh, that that could be a hell of an upset, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, they would be worthy of that nomination because uh, uh, they were great in The Last of Us. Uh, great question. Great, great question. I didn't really answer the question, but I don't see any major upsets. I think the the only upset that would make me really happy, and again, I love Ali Wong and Beef. I don't want this to come across like I didn't love her performance. I'm just really hardcore rooting for Swarm. I just want to see Swarm win some stuff. I thought that was yeah. so good. That show was so great. Good. All right, <laughs> Jesus, David, David, David's here. David, get, here. David, man, you are you're. We love you, pal. That is so big. We can't even see Jeff. Jeff, like, poke your head over the super chatters. <laughs> Here, guys, I have to disagree with you, Perry, about Coleman Domingo. I love him on Euphoria, but that movie is a wreck. And I think Andrew Scott has got the edge for a much stronger movie. It's not a flashy performance, but neither is Killian Murphy. Um, David, I will I will agree with you that overall, I think All of Us Strangers is a better movie than Rustin on a number of levels. But I still am leaning towards Coleman Domingo for having the edge in that category for whatever reason. It just seems like all of us strangers is not registering here. Like I understand BAFTA long lists and all that, but like I don't hear it making much noise at all. And it yeah. seems to me like there should have been three serious contenders in the acting categories for that movie. And I'm a, I'm a little surprised that this is how things have panned out for it. Uh, I all the strangers is exquisite. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful film. So, so profound and moving, um, and really clever in the way that it's it's a ghost story without all the, the you know the bells and whistles that you know we usually see in these things. Um, amazing performances, great screenplay, but yeah, I, I'm I'm not seeing it crossing over to a mainstream like support where it's like you know definitely getting nominated in all these different ways. And I, I agree with you, Perry. I think, uh, I think Coleman still has the edge here, Jeff. I think that we're forgetting about one guy. I know we're all saying, Oh, well, if it's not Coleman, it's Leo. And, you know, um, I think that there's a guy who made a leap this year. Hey, Baruchel for Blackberry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's very right. good. He's very good. You know, a different story. I, I yeah, think yeah. that we will look back on this performance as the equivalent of Robert Pattinson's turn in Good Time, and that is Zach Efron in the Iron Claw. Yeah, that's, I, I think Zach good. Efron has has. I'm not going to put him in the top five and, and give him a nomination yet, but I think that he is the one who is surging right now because that movie came out late. It came out, it was basically the last movie released. Uh, men are weeping. Grown men are weeping in this movie. There's a lot yeah, of men yeah. in the Academy. So, we'll well, Zach sure. Efron is magnificent in The Iron Claw. Then the movie opened, uh, I think, December 22nd, Jeff. And perfect timing, you know, and the uh, nominations are January 23rd and, you know, the to talk about that film and uh, his performance is peaking at the right time just before, you know, the, uh, the you know, the polls close. Which is what I'm out. getting at. I think you're 100% right that Coleman Domingo is everywhere and he has been campaigning textbook grade A. However, I think I'd put Efron over him right now. Wow. wow. That, movie, that movie was not positioned in the best possible way to be seriously considered for awards. And again, that is not to say I don't think Zac Efron delivers a great performance and is deserving. I think there is another reality where maybe they opted to give that film a, a film festival debut and tee it up early on in the season as Look at this movie like an awards contender. And I feel like if people went into it with that baked into their brains, we would be talking not just about Zac Efron, but we would be talking about Iron Claw in a number of categories right now. Yeah, but yeah. but we're not because it wasn't you're, positioned you're right. that way. I, I, I think you're right. Twenty four drop drop the ball a little bit. What it what I look I, I Iron Claw you know um, you know I I really liked it uh, really and you know Zach was a like what what the physical and emotional commitment to his performance uh far and away the best thing he's ever done so jeff you might be right but i don't know uh and we'll see i mean that's this I'm is not, the fun yeah, i'm not i'm not dying on that hill but i think he had to be mentioned in this conversation because i, I think he's a, I, as much as i love 
all of us strangers, that movie's a vibe. And I, do, I don't think it's performance driven. I don't think Andrew Scott really deserves to be in this oh. conversation like Zac Efron does. Oh, I disagree mm, with that. Interesting. Yeah. All right. What else we got, Perry? That's it. Those are the super chats. Those are the super we chats. Went out, we went oh. out big, courtesy of David. Oh, lies. One more. Oh, Dan, it's Skip Allen. What do you got? Um, five minorities and best supporting actress. Yes or no? no. Five minorities and best support. Five uh, in supporting actress? I don't know what what five are you talking about, Skip? Yeah, list your list your predicted your predicted five, and we'll weigh in on on their chances. Yeah, um, and I'm just queuing that up too. We also have Wiley here. No way that Billie Eilish does not win Best Original Song at the Oscars and go the bear. Um, I so I like Barbie. You guys all know at this point, I'm not like the biggest cheerleader for Barbie. I'm often picking something over it in a, a number of categories. Not best song. That song is so good. It's so perfect for that movie. And it's just a beautiful song in general. To me, that is the definition of the kind of song that should be honored. And I don't know, like I like I listen to it often and every damn time I listen to the words intensely and I start to well up. Wow. Yeah. No. Uh, great, great point. Uh, I think David's back. David, David, I think Ted Lasso will probably win because the voters tend to be lazy about series like Game of Thrones. I don't think Al Abbott Elementary will win because it missed writing and directing and no series has won that since Friends in 20 in uh, 2002. He's throwing good wow. stats at us. David, the man. David, David, you are the man with that. He didn't stat. just bring his wallet. He brought his, his A game today. He brought his A game. Way to go, David. Um, no, I still think Abbott Elementary is winning. I don't think I don't think Ted Lasso is gonna get it. Mm -hmm. Uh you know new uh, is the word. New, 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 new. Yeah, yeah. I That's why I think the bear. All That's right. I think the bear. <laughs> all right, we're done. We hit them all. <laughs> So the next episode of FYC, we are going to do our live reactions to the SAG Award nominations, which are January 10th. So join us here on FYC, on Perry Nemiroff's YouTube channel. Scroll down below, hit subscribe, so you can be the first to get all of Perry's content. Make sure you check out Jeff Snyder's other show, The Hot Mic with John Roca. Make sure you subscribe to Jeff Snyder's newsletter, theinsnyder.com. Make sure you join us for FYC. Make sure you spread FYC on all your social media platforms. Until next time, A, Happy New Year, and B, FY, see you later. <laughs>